Hello, my name is Chris. Welcome back. This is part five of the Unique Square DMX Lighting series, in which I'm explaining some of the basics of DMX lighting with the help of this marker board and these turkeys. In this section, I'll be talking about some different methods for controlling your fixtures. Let's begin. So the classic method for DMX control is the hardware controller. Every DMX hardware control system is designed to handle a set number of light fixtures. For example, I've got a Chave Obey 40 that I use to control my lights, and I like it a lot. The Obey 40 can control up to 12 different lights. Now, remember from part two how we set our DMX address. The first light starts with the DMX address 1. For every single one of those 12 lights, my Chave 40 has 16 dedicated channels of control. That means the first light gets channels 1 through 16, the second light gets channels 17 through 32, the third gets channels 33 through 48, the fourth gets channels 49 through 64, and so on. Remember that number range from 0 to 255, where 255 was equivalent to full power and 0 was equivalent to no power? This is where that range comes into play. On my controller, each fader has 255 steps. There's an LED display on my controller which tells me where my slider is in that range when the channel is selected. You just find the value that corresponds to the amount of power you want on a particular channel for a fixture, and then you set your other matching fixtures with the same value on that same channel for each light. Not only does this help you perfectly match brightness, but it also helps you match color when you're mixing with red, green, and blue channels. There's also a number of DMX softwares out there. I personally like My DMX. The interface is one of the more affordable options and the software is compatible with Macs as well as PCs. As soon as you open the software, you will see a list of lighting manufacturers on the left. Almost every light on the market is in this scan library. Let's say the first light I'm looking for is a color strip mini. You'll see that my DMX has a couple of different preset control modes. I'm just going to choose mode one and place it in my universe. This light only has four channels of control and you see that reflected in the software. Now let's say the next light I want is an American DJ Busy LED. I'm going to choose the second preset mode and drop it into my universe. I'm going to add another color strip mini and another busy LED just because I feel like it. Now, whenever I hover my mouse over the light, a menu pops up with the number of the address. If I click on the light, it even shows me the dip switch setting for that address. Alright guys, that is the end of part 5 and also the end of this unique squared.com DMX lighting series. I hope you've got a better understanding for the basics of DMX lighting now. And remember, for all the best prices on lights, DMX controllers, and any other pro audio gear needs, come over to uniquesquared.com. If you have any questions, you can go to our blog and leave them there. You're watching uniquesquared.com.